that, but it's also been true in my life uh, that church is the only opportunity I'll take. Not the only opportunity I get, but it's the only opportunity I will take to praise. And praise ought to be a very big part of my life. Amen. Church shouldn't be the only time I ever praise God. Yeah. I ought to praise Him at home. I ought to praise Him with my family. My girls, my wife, they ought to see us praise. We ought to praise God together there. It ought not be something that we come to church and we only see the Spirit of God move here in a service uh, when God gets on something or we start praising and people start shouting, come to the altar crying. And, and I understand those are some outward effects, uh, outward signs of, of worship. But man, this ought not be the only place that we worship God. And if it's the only place I'm praising then I've got to, I'm, I'm out of order. I'm out of out of, uh, of alignment, so to speak. And so let's read this. We'll all read it together out loud. Psalm 150. We'll read all six verses. Then we'll pray and we'll have another special. Here we go. Ready? Begin. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I have known folks that come to church and they don't like to sing. Well, I don't have a good voice to sing here. That singing is not just my thing. Well, look at verse number 6. Let everything that hath breath. Who in here tonight has breath? And you're, if your hand's not up, you're dead. we got a problem, okay? Everybody in here ought to be praising the Lord. That's a command from God to His people. And God doesn't stipulate whether you have a good singing voice or not. He says, let everything that hath breath. Praise the Lord. And so we're going to preach on praise tonight. Simply on praise. We're going to do a Bible study. Go through this. Show you some things. And uh, I hope it will be a blessing to you like it was to me as we study. Let's have a word of prayer. And we'll have another song. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help us tonight. And uh, God, I think everybody in here uh, that uh, walks with you, has a relationship with you, every born again believer, wants to praise you. But God, I know in my own life, so many times I get caught up with other things, I get busy, and God, it ends up being the only time I ever really praise or worship is when I'm at church. And sometimes I come in here and i got so much on my mind and so much on my plate uh, that I'm not here long enough. God, I don't get my mind off of those things long enough to really begin to praise and worship you. Lord, I pray that you help us tonight as we go through the Bible. And God, all we've got tonight is Bible. Not give it our opinion or anything like that. Uh, God, we've got Bible. And I pray that as we go through this, you help us to learn what real praise is. It's not this worldly thing that's going on. God, but learn what biblical praise is, what it means to praise. And God, uh, we'll obviously see how we can begin to praise. And I pray that you would give us some things tonight that we can take home and, and apply. Some practical things that we can apply to our lives that will help us become better Christians. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? Who taught the ocean you can only come this far? And who showed the moon where to hide till evening? Whose word alone can catch a falling star? Let us 
85 words. 12 of them are the word praise. I think it's pretty important. In my Bible, on my page right here, this is the last three chapters of Psalms, the word praise is on that page 31 times in my Bible. In the last five chapters of the book of Psalms, uh, the word praise or praises is used 45 times in the last five chapters of the book of Psalms. Uh, praise, the word praise uh, is used 277 times in the Bible. 277 times the word praise or praises is used. 95 at least, I went through this, uh, at least 95 of them are all referring to praising God. None of them refer to me praising me. Or be praising you. Or be praising the church. 95 of them all about praising God. Amen. When God mentions something 95 times, I think it's pretty important. important. Amen. I think it shows that God wants it to be a part of our life. The Great Commission. We've been studying the Great Commission. Missions, soul winning. Uh, here the last few weeks in Sunday school. We can find the Great Commission in six different, five different passages in the first five books of the New Testament. And we think that's pretty important. Yet praising God 95 times in the whole Bible, and so many of us miss it. So many churches today missing what praise is. Now I mentioned it a few minutes ago, uh, there's a lot of... Uh, we've let modern day religion, charismatics, we've let those kinds of things take praise and worship away from us because we, we don't want to be like them. We're not bringing anything in here that's going to cause us to be worldly or that would make us think worldly. There was a man uh, in, in our church, the, the church that I grew up in, and uh, he got saved. God changed his life, did a miracle in his life, and he played the guitar, and he used to listen to old-time country music. I mean, Merle Haggard. And, uh, anybody know who Merle Haggard is? Nobody from the... Y'all are from the city. Okay. Okay, all right. Uh, I'm talking old-school country music. Uh, I'm just an Oki from Muskogee, that kind of stuff. Well, he would take, uh, you say, I don't even know what that means either. And I live in the country. Uh, but he would take those old country songs, and he would write new words to them, and get up and sing them. Now, I'm not saying that that's wrong. But everybody that knew I'm just an Oki from Muskogee was singing that, and not paying attention to what he was singing about the Lord. You understand? And so there's, we don't want to bring stuff into the church that's going to cause us to think worldly or be worldly or even resemble the world. And so what's going on in a lot of these churches today, this praise and worship idea, man, it's just it's just a feel-good thing. Right. Come in here, and I had a guy tell me one time, he said, man, I, you know, I, I like you, I like the preacher, uh, but, you know, I just don't feel good when I leave your church. I said, why not? He goes, man, the preaching's too hard. <laughs> I said, well, I don't come to church to feel good. Now, most of the time when I leave church, I feel pretty good. Yeah, man. I enjoy coming to church. Yes. I like fellowshipping with you. I like singing the songs. I like listening to the songs. I like hard preaching. Amen. I like preaching that they say in the South rips my face off. Yeah. I like to get a new face every service. I enjoy that kind of preaching. Some people don't. The bottom line is whether you like that kind of preaching or you don't like that kind of preaching... I'm not coming to church, and we shouldn't come to church to feel good. That's right. That's not why God started it. That's not why God gave us the Bible. I'm glad God does enough for us and gives us enough and makes us feel good, but I'm glad I'm not saved based on my emotions. Because can I be honest? There are days I wake up and I don't really feel saved. Yeah. There are days I wake up and I don't really feel like being a Christian. Just, let's, let's just be honest with each other tonight. Amen. It happens. Yeah. It happens. Well, what are some of the keys? What's, what's one of the things that we ought to do? We live in a messed up world. Our world, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, we live in a negative world. Yeah. Everybody's negative. There's not, I don't even like to watch the news. Somebody asked me, I can't remember, uh, oh, I went to the dentist this week, had two people, I walk in and the dentist is sitting there watching it. He goes, you ever been to the Middle East? I said, no. He goes, it's a mess over there, don't go. Oh, well, I wasn't really planning on it. What little bit I know about what's going on in the Middle East, I don't really want any part of that. 
Uh, it's just negative. Everything that's going on in the world is negative. You go to work with people, and what do they do? First thing out of the mouth, 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm walking through the door at Home Depot. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, miserable. Another day at home. And can I tell you, that attitude is catching? Yes, it is. How hard is it to walk into that kind of, uh, of a mentality, that kind of a conversation, and be positive? Man, it's good to be alive. i got to work at Home Depot. They pay garbage money and uh, they don't take care of us. And it's way too early to be up. No normal human being. Now, I may think some of those things, but I don't want to come into that and start my day being negative. Amen. But it's hard. Yeah. Right. We live in a negative world. The world is so self-absorbed. It's so, uh, you know, uh, if it feels good, do it. It's all about me. I, I, I want things to happen my way, to be my way. Burger King, have it your way. All that. That's, that's what's going on in the world. It's all about us. You want to know how to get out of depression and out of discouragement? Get your mind off of you. Amen. Get your mind on somebody else. Or better yet, get your mind on Him. Amen. Yeah. Get your mind on Him. There's somebody out there who's got it worse than you do today. That's right. That's right. As bad as you might have it, and I'm not trying to downplay whatever you might be going through. Your problems are big problems to you. I understand that. My problems are big problems to me. But there's somebody out there who's got bigger problems than I do. That's right. And I could have it worse. Brother Guido says what? On my worst day, I'm still on my way to a place called hell. Amen. If that's as bad as it gets for me, that's pretty good. Amen. Praise. Seems to be pretty important to God if He's mentioned it so many times in the Bible. We live in a world that there's not much to be excited about or thrilled about. Everything and everyone, they're so selfish. It's all about them. And all they do is complain and whine and moan and groan. It's just negativity everywhere. Negativity is discouraging. It's depressing. It steals. It robs you of your joy. It robs you of peace. It robs you of confidence. It robs you of hope. I, heard, I read on, uh, on Twitter, and uh, one of the guys I saw posted today, he said, any confidence that I had in the government, I don't have any anymore. Amen. Yeah, amen. I, I second that. But if... My confidence is based on what the government does. I'm in trouble. That's right. If my hope is based on what the president does and what the White House does and the Senate and the Congress and the mayor, if my hope is based on that kind of stuff, how well the police do their job around here, I'm in trouble. Yeah. See, my confidence doesn't need to be in other people. Because the bottom line is, they're no better than me, I'm no better than them. We all got issues. We've all got problems. My hope and my confidence ought to be in somebody that's bigger than me. Somebody that's stronger than me. Somebody that's got some more intelligence than me. And can I be honest? We're all part of the human race. That's right. You might be able to do math faster than me, but you can't figure out the problems any better than I can. See what I'm God. God's who my hope and my confidence needs to be in. Now, let's get on track here tonight. When our joy is gone, when our peace is gone, when our confidence is gone, when our hope is gone, I'm telling you about human nature right now. When all of those things are gone, we become cynical, we become pessimistic, we get angry, we have temper problems, anger leads to bitterness, bitterness leads to all kinds of other issues. What's the answer? Praise. Praise. Look at Philippians. We're coming back to Psalms. We'll spend most of the night there in Psalms, but I want you to take your Bible right now and go look at Philippians. Philippians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. How I many you know somebody that's just cynical? There's that, I mean, they, they can't see the good in anything. Glass is always half empty. Coffee's always too cold. It's not hot enough. It's not this. It's not that. Everything's a problem. I can always find somebody, uh, there, there's somebody I can always find something to complain about. How many know somebody like that? How many are that somebody? Sure. Man, if I'm honest with myself and I'm honest with you, I can find something to complain about anything. Yeah, that's right. And many times I find myself doing that. You ask my wife. 
And listen, listen, I try not to. I don't want to be that person. There are times I catch myself and I'll actually say, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to complain. And I'll say a quick prayer, God help me. But there are other times when I'm, I'm, man, I'm just, I'm having a time complaining. Man, I'm, I'm digging that ditch and I'm enjoying it. Getting that dirt all over me. And I look at, look at my wife's face and I can tell, man, I'm burying her. You see, that kind of an attitude doesn't just affect me. It affects... That's right. Amen. Come on. Can you believe this? Can you believe what Sincere did? Can you believe what Miss Daisy did? Can you believe what Myra did? Can you believe... You know, we start talking about We complain and we whine. And next thing you know, we're dragging everybody else down. I had my tooth pulled Tuesday and I was still kind of... It was sore. Got in for visitation Tuesday night and I told everybody, I said, I don't mean to be a downer. I, I mean, I was not... Hey, how's everybody doing? And that's not usually my personality anyway, but uh, man, my mouth hurt. My face hurt. And I told Miss Lisa tonight, I said, you know, I got no reason to complain because when she was having a teeth problem, her hurt way worse than mine and for way longer. And so I'm just saying, somebody's got bigger issues than me. Somebody's got it worse than me. She doesn't anymore, thank God. God answered those prayers. Teeth problems are rough. Amen. One of these days we won't have them anymore. <laughs> Problems. Hopefully we'll still have our teeth. <laughs> anyway, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, look at verse number 6. Paul says this, Be careful for nothing. What's he talking about? Don't worry. Don't fret. You know the Bible says fret not? Yeah, that's right. Fret means to worry and get yourself worked up about situations. And we've talked about this before. Most of the times, the things that we worry about and the things we fret about are things that never happen. That's true. We, you know, we've talked about the conversations in your mind with somebody that never really happened, but the next time you see them, you're ticked off at them. Yeah. Because you had a conversation up here. Right. Like, What's wrong with you? You said this. What? You know, uh, we worry about things that never, never happen. He says here, be careful for nothing. It means don't worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. There's a lot there. And the peace of God, which keep which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So what Paul is doing here, he's saying don't worry, but he's understanding, he's pointing out, listen, I understand human nature. You're bound to worry about some things. You're bound to get stressed out about some things. That's a fact of life. He says, I don't want you to, and we shouldn't do those. Be careful with it. Go to God with it. But... If you find yourself in that situation, verse number 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. So that conversation you're having with whoever in your mind, is that true? Are the things that's going on there, are those things true? If they're not, then throw them out. Quit thinking about them. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, there's our word, think on these things. Think on these things. Now, I said a minute ago, negativity is catching. It's easy. It, it, that's our human nature. It's, it's natural for us to just automatically go to the worst. Oh, I can't believe they did that. Figures. They're just, that's the kind of person they are. Well, how do you know? Maybe they're having a bad day. Dr. Howells used to say this, be kind to everybody because everybody's having a bad day. And I don't know what you're going through, but because I'm having a bad day, I smart off or I say something dumb to you, I respond to you in a way that uh, is not right, all because I'm not right in my thinking. He said it right there, think on these things. So Paul understood, hey, we have these problems. I understand it's going to happen. Don't think that you're never going to get stressed out. Don't think that you're never going to get discouraged. Because it'll happen. But when it does, you need to go back to this. Finally, brethren, think on these things. Now, let's go back to Psalms. Let's go back to Psalms. He said praise. Praise. Well, what is praise? What is praise? I wrote some things down here. If you look praise up in Webster's Dictionary, it says this. Praise is commendation or honor. That's what that word commendation means. Commendation or honor bestowed on a person for his personal virtues or actions. 
It means I commend you for what you did. Brother Will uh, vacuums the auditorium, and I tell him often, the vacuum, the, the floor looks good. The floor, you did a good job. That's praise. I'm, I'm praying, I'm commending him for what he's done. I try to do that with my children. I try to do that with other people. There are times when we can't praise folks for certain things. And, but we need to make sure when the opportunity arrives, especially as parents, kids, make sure you, moms and dads, make sure you're praising your kids when they're doing something right. Don't spend all your time going, no, no, no. What's the matter with you? Stop doing that. Quit it. Stop it. No. Go. Sit down. Blah. If you're just negative, negative, negative all the time, then what kind of a, uh, that, that's going to mess them up. I'm not saying don't correct. The Bible says the rod of correction Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child with the rod of correction, not the corner of correction. Not the grounding, the, the week of no TV of correction. The rod of correction will drive it far from But we've got to be positive too. Well, you, you did good here. You did right here. I'm proud of you for this. Thank you for doing that. You, uh, you know, be positive. Be positive. And so that's, that's what praise is. It's commendation bestowed on a person for their personal virtues or actions. Who they are, their character, or what they've done. We'll go back to Psalm 150, and let's see if we can apply that. Who's it talking about praising? Lord. First four words, praise ye the Lord. Can we praise God for His character? Amen. Can we praise God for who He is tonight? He's just, He's holy, He's righteous. God's never made a mistake, and He's never going to make a mistake. God's not messed up in any area of your life, and He never will. Amen. Amen. He's righteous. Yeah. He's just. He's holy. He's not a God that tells me if I go out and blow up buildings and kill myself in the act, then I get to go to heaven and have some big fornication party up there. He's a holy God. Amen. Sure. He's not vile. He's not filthy. He's not wicked. He's perfect. He's loving. He's patient. As a father pitied his child. So God pitieth us. There are times when I, I pity them. I understand. You know what? They're, they're just kids. They don't understand because they're little. Okay, I understand that. If ye being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more your Father in Heaven know how to give good gifts unto them? Think I'm a better, better dad than he is? No. He's loving. He's kind. He's patient. You know what I struggle with? One of the biggest things I struggle with? Patience. I'm not very patient. I'm not. Man, I... Everybody catch that? Who didn't catch it? understand what I'm saying. Incompetence. It... <laughs> and you go to Walmart, they ring you up, it's $2.57, I give them $3 and they go, do you have 47 cents? No. I wanted to go to Taco Bell one time when I was coaching in Arkansas. I was coaching a basketball team. We stopped uh, running way back home from the ball game. We stopped at a Taco Bell, and I walked in, and I told the girl, I said, now listen, uh, I'm from out of state. I only have out of state cash. Is that okay? Is that accepted here? <laughs> and she goes, never missed a beat. I need to go ask my manager, and walked off. <laughs> so I let her go. <laughs> I didn't stop her. Guys are standing beside me, you ain't right, but I'm like, well, you, whatever. Maybe that's not right. She comes back, she goes, You're messing with me, aren't you? I said, Mm hmm. <laughs> I'd like a number four, and a number six, and a number seven. Uh, but anyway, that's hilarious. somebody said this before the ministry would be great if it wasn't for people. Yeah, come on. But do we understand what ministry is? People. People. Amen. Those of you who work in Super Church, sometimes it's hard when you get a kid standing out there beating on the door. What do I do? What do I do? You've got to be patient. You've got to be kind. You've got to be firm. I'm just saying. Yeah, you know, we, we deal with people problems. And, and so what do we do? Commendation. Let me get I'm off track. 
Praise is commentation bestowed on a person for his personal virtues. God is definitely worthy of praise for his virtues or his actions. God done any actions in your life that's worthy of praise? Sure. Salvation, how about that? We could stop right there. What is salvation? I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heaven. My sins are forgiven. Amen. All of them, past, present, and future sins, they're all under the blood. I'm not going to be judged tonight. If I die tonight, I won't be judged for my sin. I'll be judged for what I did or didn't do for God after I got saved. That's all included in salvation. Not to mention all of the other blessings. The, uh, the invitation to have a relationship with the God of heaven. That comes with salvation. Those are some pretty amazing benefits. But then He daily loadeth us with benefits. I say that verse often around here. He daily loadeth us with benefits. I'm healthy. Nobody had to dress me this morning. I was able to dress my... you follow me? Yeah, we see people out here in wheelchairs. We see people out here stumbling around. They can't take care of them. Nobody has to take care of me. I can take care of myself. I've got plenty of food in the refrigerator. I'm not missing any meals, obviously. I've got a car to drive. I've got a job. My bills are paid. Brother Mike Clark said it this week. He said the problem with most people is they don't have any problems, so they maximize the trivial. We mean, it's almost like God's been so good to us, we don't have any problems. And because we live in a negative world, we just have to almost make up problems. That's what happened to you? Oh, that curling iron broke. <laughs> Life is over! Breach! Break it there. I broke a nail! Uh -oh. What am I going to do? Teenage out. girls come in. What's the matter with you? Oh, I'm not an eyeliner. You know, we begin to maximize this stuff that, really? That's your problem? That's your big problem? It's you broke your nail. Get out. <laughs> Get out. Uh-oh. Preach. Now, I understand, the teenagers, that's a big deal. Nails cost like three dollars. <laughs> well, that's good you go to the wrong nail salon up there in Boston tonight. <laughs> How many of you have seen that place? R-O-N-G. It's the wrong nail swan. Don't go there. It's the wrong one. I'm just saying, God's been good to us. And if, listen, if I lost it all today, God's still been good to me. Yes, amen. You know the one thing that can never be taken away from me? God forbid I lose the house. God forbid I lose my family. God forbid I lose my job. God forbid we lose this. But you know what I can never lose? My relationship with Him. Yes, amen. I can never lose my salvation. And if God took every... Look at Job. God took it all away. God allowed it all to be gone. All ten of His children dead in the same day. That's right. All of His wealth gone. Same day. I'm talking one day in the life of Job. <laughs> All of his kids died. He lost everything. The Midianites came in, took everything. I mean, he would one day in his life was. We'd look at his life and go, "Hold on, yeah." If anybody got the short end of the stick in the Bible, Job Amen. got the short end of the stick. But in all this, Job cursed not God. That's right. You know what Job did? He began to praise. You read the book of Job. Read the book of Job. He began to figure out it's not about me, it's all about him. It's all about him. Think about how good God's been. God's actions are worthy of praise. What does praise mean? It means to magnify, it means to glorify, it means expressed in word or song. You know what that means? There's no other word, there's no other way for you to praise except for this. There's no lifestyle praising. Word or song. Well, I'm not a good boy, so I can't sing. Do you praise Him at home? Do you praise Him at home? And thank God for this. Man, bless His holy name because of this. Uh, I'm just saying that we praise God. It's expressed with word or song. It can only be done with your voice. Go to Psalm chapter 146. That's the longest part of the message. Psalm chapter 146. We still got a lot of Bible to cover, but you'll be surprised how fast we're not going to go. 
Psalm 146. <laughs> Verse number 1. Praise ye the Lord... Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. You know what praise there means in that verse? It means to rave or to celebrate. It goes beyond just, man, God's been good. To celebrate. What do you mean to celebrate? Well, what do you do when the Eagles score a touchdown? Yeah. Woo! Celebrate. What do you do when Michael Jordan dunks all over Patrick Ewing? What do you do but LeBron goes out with a cold. Oh. <laughs> what do you do with your favorite team? You don't go, oh, that was awesome. <laughs> Anybody in here, you, you probably remember seeing the Scotty Pippen dunk on Patrick Ewing. Ewing hits the floor, Scotty just looks at him. You know what I was doing? I watched that game live. You know what I did when he did that? <laughs> yeah, right. My brothers were sitting there. My mom was sitting there. I don't know if she's going to cross her public me. Oh, did you see that? That was unbelievable. Patrick Ewing, you stink. I'm hollering at Patrick Ewing on the TV like, like he can hear me. <laughs> I'm going crazy because of that dunk. And I watched all these Bulls games, see Jordan uh, score up dunk. Oh, basically, I can get, see, we get excited. We know how to celebrate when it's something we're excited about, but we come to church and it's... Why do we celebrate here? Because we're not excited about the Lord. That's right. That's, that's just where it's at. That's just that. Hey, and everybody celebrates different. I understand Brother Weedo is not a stand on the chair, run a lap around the building kind of praiser. He'll sit over there and cry. He's praising God in his heart. He's worshiping the Lord. Everybody worships different. But man, when we come in here and something and the Lord shows up in this place and God's presence moves down in here and we can just sit there and go, Uh-oh. That was good. What are you going to have to church? You follow me? Yeah, amen. Come on. To rave or to celebrate. Psalm chapter 147, look at verse number 1. Praise ye the Lord for it is good to sing praises unto our God. For it is pleasant and praise is comely. Praise there. The word praises, good to sing praises, literally means to touch the parts of a musical instrument to make music accompanied by the voice. Listen, if you can play an instrument in here and you're any good, please come let me know because we'd love for you to play. you got to be living right. Okay, we understand all that. But I'm just saying that we ought to use our talents and abilities for the Lord. That's what praises means. You say, I can't play anything. Then sing. You say, I can't sing. Make a joyful noise. They sang a song. We took the girls over to Grace. Grace Baptist Church. Brother Joe White. They're in vacation Bible school this week. And the brother Christian Penichetti, he's a psychopath anyway. He got up there and sang a song about all God's creatures have a voice in the choir. Some clap their hands. Others their paws. Others any old thing they got. What a... Yeah, I mean, it's a goofy song, but you know what it was saying? Anybody can praise God. Amen. It's not just the shouters. It's not just the ones that stand up and wave their hands. It's not just the weepers. You can praise God. Amen. Amen, brother Frank. Amen. Psalm 147, verse 12. Look at this. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. You know what the word praise there means? You say, how does it mean all these different things? Strong's concordance. I'll show you that later. Psalm 147, verse number 12. Praise there means to address in a loud tone. Now, how many of you, when you're watching the Eagles games, get loud? Come on. Don't lie. Thank you, David, for your honesty. How many of you like the Flyers? How I many of you get loud when you're watching the Flyers? You know, some dude does a hat trick. It's, oh yeah, I'm coming out of my chair. Neighbors are going to hear me. And neighbors ever hear you praising God? I'm saying it's not just you. That's to me. Okay, that's to me. Just praising God here is not enough. God wants us to praise Him at home. Let's, let's quickly go through some things, uh, some scriptures. Take your Bible. We'll go all the way back to Psalm 35. Psalm chapter 35. Let me just give you some things, some thoughts. I don't have a 
you know, a fancy outline or anything tonight. These are some things that God showed me as I began to study this idea of praise. Listen, some of the things that were said last week at the summit, it, it was a blessing for me to go. It was a blessing for me to be there. I got some things. But some of the things, one of the things that God dealt with me about was this idea of praise. I come to God every day with a laundry list of, God, I need this. God, I need this. God, I need this. I come to God with a laundry list of things that you need. God, I know so-and-so needs this. I know so-and-so needs this. God, I know so-and-so needs this. But how long is my list and how much time do I spend out of my prayer time, whether it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it is, whatever your prayer time, how much of that time do you spend praising God as you do? God, I need, 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 I need. Now I'm glad God hear, hears and answers our prayers. And God wants us to come to Him with those things. But do we praise God? That's one of the things God spoke to me about. Praising God. I got a huge prayer list. And up until last week, very little of it had anything to do with praising and worshiping God. Wow. That's just that's backwards. It's wrong. God pointed it out to me. Something that I need to fix. You might have this figured out, but I did not. Psalm 35, verse number 18. We'll move quick. He says, I will give thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. I will praise thee among much people. You know what David was saying? He said, I'm not going to be scared about who's around. I'm going to praise God. Amen. I'm going to praise God. We heard uh, uh, whoever preached it uh, a few nights ago or a couple weeks ago about, um, oh, it was last week at the summit. Brother Fisher talking about David's wife, Michael. And... Uh, all the things that went on in her life, and when she finally saw David come home bringing the ark of God with him, she despised him. Right. You know why she despised him? Because she couldn't see God. She was bitter about everything else that happened. To her. She quit praising God along the way. She quit praising God somewhere else because somebody had hurt her. And I'm not saying uh, she deserved to be hurt, but somebody hurt her and she allowed herself to become bitter. She allowed herself to become angry and cynical and pessimistic, and she quit seeing God do things. God didn't stop doing things. She just quit seeing it. Yeah, man, that's good. And she despised David. And David said, I don't care. I'm going to praise God. He went on to say, I'm going to worship the Lord among the people. And the people you know, the people you work with, they know you love God. I don't mean, oh, I go to church every Sunday. They see you praying at work. They see you, they hear the music you listen to, uh, whatever the case may be. I'm just saying, do you have a testimony before the people you work with? Do the people that live around you know that it's not just a Sunday tradition for you to go to church, but you know how to praise and worship God? You talk about God to other people? He says, I'll praise Him among much people. Among much people. Now listen, this is the only meddling I think I'll, I'll do tonight. But are we really praising God when we come to church? This, this, this is me. So don't get offended. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend it. It's Bible. Am I really praising God when I come to church? Now, can I be honest with you? I've been in this my whole life. I can get up here and sing these songs and be completely. I could be on another planet yeah, amen. and sing these songs. And I have been. We come in here and we, we know them. We sing so many of them. In the beginning, we sang the same 12 songs every month. One month, we'd sing 12 songs. We'd sing them every, uh, every week. We'd sing the same 12 songs. To try to teach people these songs. Some of us had never heard them before. And boy, I could come in and, and now many of us have been around here. We could come in here and we, we're not praising God. We sang number 7 tonight in the hymn book. I wasn't trying to set anybody up that's not, but I wonder how many of us really thought about blessed be the name. All praise to him. Or do we just come in, oh, okay, we sing a couple songs. You see what I'm saying? So do we really worship? And that's as far as I'll go. You know, I know what I do. And I'm guilty of that. Coming in here and I'm not praising. I'm just repetition. The Bible says vain. Repetition. I'm just going through the motions. That's not what God wants. God's nowhere near that. We'll look at something here in just a minute. Let's go. Psalm chapter 42, verse number 5. Psalm chapter 42. I was going to read the whole psalm, but for sake of time, we won't. Psalm chapter 42, 
David or the writer here is you can tell he's discouraged. It's not very long if you were to go back and read it. Uh, verse number 1 and 2, he says, my, uh, As the heart panted after the water brook, so my soul panted after God. My soul thirsteth for thee. Verse 3, My tears have been my meat. Uh, they continually say, Where is they? People are mocking him. He can tell he's discouraged. Where is your God now? Dad? Or whoever it is with David, where is your God at now? Have they ever said that to you, people in the world? Oh, where's your God now? Things are going down the tubes for you. Where's God now? Huh? How's that faith working for you now? How's that God thing working out for you now? And you begin to sit back and you think, God, where are you? What are you doing? God, I don't understand. And they're coming to me and they're saying, where's God? And I don't have an answer. And you begin to question, maybe even in your own mind, where is God? You know what you need to do? You need to do like David did, or like Abraham did. You need to go back and remember. You need to go back and remember all of the things that God has done. Just because He may be silent right now, what's the teacher do when you're taking a test? Nothing. They're lazy. No, I'm just kidding. They don't do anything. Detention. First week of school. I know your teacher. <laughs> what do they do? They don't talk. They're silent during the test, aren't they? They don't give you any answers. They don't give you any help. They don't give you any looks. They don't give you any pointers. They just look. And they watch. They're there. They know what's going on. They're aware. Are you listening? They're aware of what's going on, but they're silent. Just because God's not moving at that time doesn't mean He's forgotten about you. He still knows your name. He still knows where you're at. And so look at verse number 5. The writer here is obviously discouraged. And he says in verse number 5, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. And then look what he says. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm discouraged. I'm depressed. They're, they're mocking me. They're, they're asking where's God at. And I don't even have an answer for it. But I shall yet praise Him for the help of His countenance. He said, I'm going to make a decision. I can't answer that question right now. Where's God? How's God working? I don't have an answer for that, but I'm going to praise God because I know I'm saved. Yeah. What sort of things are true, Philippians 4, 8. Well, certain things are true. I know I'm saved. I know I did what the Bible said. I know I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. So if this is as bad as it gets, I'm still going to heaven. But I know God's blessed me here, and I know God's blessed me here, and I know God's blessed me here. So I don't have an answer for your question, sir. I don't have an answer for your question, ma'am. But I know that God is real. How do you know? I've experienced it. I've seen His hand at work in my life. It's not just something I do on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Thursday night. I know there's a God. Amen. And sometimes, God, sometimes it's hard to explain God to somebody who they're so cynical and they're so negative. How do you explain God? I can't explain God. He's beyond explanation. How do you explain somebody loving you so much, as wicked and ungodly as you know you are, and as I know I am, how do you explain somebody loving you so much that they give their only begotten Son to die for you? I'm not giving those two girls up for anybody in here. I love you. But I wouldn't sacrifice them for anybody in this room. And He loved me knowing what I was. So I'll give my Son. How do you explain that? God. That's how I explain that. God. For God so loved the world. You can't explain God. You have to experience God. That's why David said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I can tell you, I can preach till I'm blue in the face how awesome God is, but until you step out and say, okay, I'm going to try God, I'm going to taste and see, you know what? They were right. God is pretty good. Yep. Well, taste and see. He made a decision. You realize praise is a decision. You don't have to decide to be negative. I can walk into Home Depot at 5 in the morning and at 5.05 I can be right there. Come on, get right. This job stinks. The hours are terrible. The coffee's worse. 
I don't know who made the coffee today at Home Depot, but they should be slapped. <laughs> and Monday, I'm going to find out who it was, and I'm going to slap them. That was the worst cup of coffee I've ever had in my life. It was terrible. Huh? But we know how I got on that. I'm being negative, aren't I? Complain. You see, I didn't even have to make that choice. It just happened. If you're going to praise God, you're going to have to decide to do it. It's not just going to be on accident. Amen. You're not just going to exude the praise of God because that's not... No. You're going to have to make a choice. You go through and read all the different psalms and all the different verses where David says and the writers say, I will praise Him. I will praise God. I will sing the praise. You know what those are? Those are conscious decisions. I choose... Even though I don't understand my circumstances, even though I don't understand what's going on, and I don't know where God's at or why God's let me do let this happen, I choose to praise Him anyway. Praise is a choice. It's a choice. And things don't have to be going good for me to praise. I walked into the summit last week and I was having a little a little pity party for myself. Something came up and, and it, it to me it was big. Somebody else might not be a big deal, but it was it was big to me. And I walked in, and, and, and I kid you not, I'm thinking, God, I don't understand this, and it doesn't make sense to me, and I hope you fix this. And that night, that church planner to Connecticut got up, and his wife's been diagnosed with a terminal disease. She's in a wheelchair. Mm. And God's sitting there going, how's your problem measure up now? Uh-oh. My wife's not in a wheelchair. Thank God. She didn't have a terminal disease. And then the next day, 22-year-old pastor's daughter gets up and sings about the praise of God. She's dying of cancer, has a feeding tube in right now. She's up there singing, worshiping, praising the Lord, not worried about it. Just went through the biggest chemo treatment of her life and showed up to church. Wow. God's going, how big is your problem now? That's what I said at the beginning. I could have it worse. I'm not minimizing your problem. But when I begin to look at what God has done for me and the things that God has kept from me, I got it pretty good. I don't, I don't have any reason to complain whatsoever. Amen. Psalm chapter 50, verse 23. Psalm chapter 50, verse number 23. As a Christian, it ought to be our number one goal to glorify God, to honor God, for God to be pleased with our life. Look at verse 23. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. That's pretty simple. And glorify God with your life? Praise. Right there. Praise Him for who He is. And you say, what is praise? Praise involves thankfulness. It involves gratitude. God, thank You for saving me. I'm not going to get into a lesson about thankful, uh, but the Bible has more to say about giving thanks than it does to say be thankful. Thankful means I'm overwhelmed with gratitude. Well, when the car breaks down, and pardon me, but when the house burns down, it's probably hard to be full of gratitude. But God says most of the time, give thanks. You know what that means? Just say thank you. How kind of God that He doesn't command me to be full of gratitude for everything. He just says, just say thank you. Maybe even if you don't feel thankful, just give me the common courtesy of saying thank you. You know, when you begin to start thanking God, you get up in the morning to pray, you don't really feel like praying, you don't really feel like doing right, you don't really feel like doing what you're supposed to do, but you start thanking God, God, thank you for saving me. God, thank you for my church. God, thank you for my family. You start going through a list, and if you'll focus, you won't get very far down that list of saying thank you, and you'll begin to be thankful. Amen. That's good. God, thank you that my wife's not in a wheelchair. Thank you that my daughter isn't dying of cancer. Thank you for this. Thank you. You know what? I got a lot to be grateful for. I got a lot to say thank you for. Praise. It involves gratitude. 
It involves worshiping God for who He is. Praise glorifies God. Stop complaining. Start praising. We gotta put that on a T-shirt. Stop complaining. Start praising. Amen. Somebody make that and buy me one. <laughs> Amen. Psalm seventy-one. I just got a couple more. Psalm seventy-one. Seventy-one to verse number fourteen. But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. I will hope continually. If you go back and read Psalm 71, look up at verse number 2. Deliver me. He's in trouble. Cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me. Save me. Be thou my strong habitation whereunto I may continually resort. Can you, can you feel it? Can you sense it? He's in a bit of a spot. He's in a little bit of trouble. Save me. Hear me. And de deliver me. God, I need your help. Then he gets to verse number 14. He says, But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. Even though it's bad in my life, I choose to keep praising God. I choose to keep my hope in Him. You know what praising does? It restores all that confidence and that joy and that peace and that hope that the negative world just soaks up and, and zaps out of us. Confidence and praising God restores all that stuff. Puts it all back. You know why? Because it's not about me. And I've got to do this so I can provide for my family. You're not the one who provides for your family anyway. That's right. God Come on. Says, I've got to pay these bills. You couldn't pay the bills if God broke your body down. That's right. Come on. And made you have to trust God. Yeah. Come on. The only reason you got a job is because God will let you have a job. That's right. There's a lot of people out there who want jobs and can't. Mm -hmm. Can't get them, can't find them. Not physically able. Follow me? You see what I'm saying? Praise begins to restore the hope and the confidence. It's not about me. It's not up to me. He's in control. That's right. I have what I have because He lets me have it. Amen. They're not mine. They're not yours. He's not yours. Say amen right there. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. God's in control. I keep going back to that shirt that Amanda has. Let go. And the problem with me, I, I need to have control. Yeah. That's my personality. I have to figure it out. My wife comes to me crying with a problem and I'm immediately, my mind's racing. Okay, I can do this, I can do this, I can go whoop this person, I can punch them square in the mouth and t take care of this problem, whatever. You know, whatever it is, I'm trying to figure it out. Until she says, I don't want you to figure it out. I just want you to listen. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> yeah. Preach. Uh-oh. I have to figure it out. That, that's what I do. Amen. You know what's happened? It's, it's no longer in my control. God's in control. God's in control. Amen. But praise. I begin to praise God for who He is and the things He's done. I begin to realize, you know what? God's got this. I don't have to worry. I don't have to fear. I don't have to stress. Look at Psalm 107. Psalm 107. Quickly follow me. Verse number 8. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. Or verse number 15. Huh. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. Or verse number 21. It's again good. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and and for His wonderful works to the children of men. Did you get it yet? Amen. How about verse 31? Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. You say, I don't feel like God's being very wonderful to me. Huh, you missed it. Amen. Ask not what God can do for you. Ask what you can do for God. Amen. Oh, that men would praise God the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works. 
You know what I need the most in my life tonight? I need the presence of God. Amen. As an individual, over there in my home, and we as a church, the thing we need the most is the presence of God. Go to Psalm chapter 100. Psalm chapter 100. These are the last two verses I'll show you will be done. I can tell some of you are bored. Oh. Psalm 100, verse number 2. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. I think we saw a definition earlier about praises with your mouth. We, we sing what we pray. Verse number 4. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. What do I need the most in my life? The presence of God. How do I get it? Praise. I can't even get into the courts, the gates, without praise. God inhabits the praise of His people. You know what the word habit means? Inhabit. He lives there. He dwells there. He shows up and stays there. You want the presence of God in your life? You better learn to praise. I want the presence of God in my life. I better learn to praise. Does that mean I'm not going to have problems? No. I mean you're not going to have problems? No. But i got a, I got a God bigger than my problems. Amen. Bigger than all your problems. Bigger than all your needs. My God is bigger. He's bigger. He's better. He's stronger. He's smarter. God, nothing takes Him by surprise. And as bad as it might look right now, maybe God's just trying to say, praise me. Why don't you go back and think about all the good things I have done. That, by the way, you, Paul Coyle, did not deserve. Any of the goodness of God in my life, I've never deserved one bit of it. Praise. It's important. Going to the presence of God, it's vital. Praise. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for.